Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel and I'm here today with a card that I created the background by stamping with Distress Oxide inks and a Jelly Bean Soup set of stamps. So I have another video that I'm going to link to here where I did some layered background stamping with Distress Oxide inks on craft cardstock. But I wanted to just show you how beautifully the Distress Oxide inks stamp in general and that you can create a background using those Distress Oxide inks on white cardstock as well. Let's get started making this card. You can see I have a four and a quarter by five and a half card panel of white cardstock. I have three Distress Oxide inks and I have three stamps from this Jelly Bean Soup stamp set that is from the Bowl of Dreams collection. I also have my Lawn Fawn stamp chamois to clean off in between stamping so that I get a nice clear impression. So I'm going to put my cardstock down not against the edge of my Misty because I did want to stamp on this corner and I'm I'm going to start in one corner and then kind of move my way down towards the middle. So I am using three different colors of the Distress Oxide inks. I have Picked Raspberry, Abandoned Coral, and for the leaves I'm using Twisted Citron. You can see that sometimes when I don't get a perfectly dark impression, I am double stamping. And that is the benefit to using the Misty. If you don't like the impression or if you want a much brighter or darker or deeper image, you can double stamp. And I just love doing that. I think with an acrylic block, it's possible, but it's a lot harder, especially for me. I have trouble lining up the stamps to get that perfect second impression. So with the abandoned coral and that smaller flower stamp, I am double stamping it every single time. And I really, really love the way that this color comes out on white cardstock when you double stamp it. You can see that as far as the Distress Oxide inks, they sit on the paper a little bit more. They don't uh, blend into the paper as much, so you do have to give them a little bit of time to dry, but mine is drying as we are making our way across the card panel. I'm just going to flip it around. You can see I'm using a large bar magnet there. I think those are very handy to have with the Misty. And again, I am double stamping those smaller flowers, the abandoned coral. It also makes the white of the stamp, the part that's not stamped in the center of the flower, stand out even more when you double stamp it. And the chamois is great for this or any stamping technique because it cleans off the stamp and you get a nice clear image every single time when your stamps are nice and clean. I switch from the largest flower to the smaller flower to the leaves every single time so that I get a nice variety on the panel. And then at the end, I'm just filling in with little bits on the side. So once I take this panel out of my Misty, you can see that it is completely covered and it looks like a background paper, which I love. From the same stamp set, I'm going to stamp the sentiment high on black cardstock. So I'm going to be sure to use some EK Success powder tool and then ink up my stamp with Simon Says Stamp Clear Embossing Ink. And then I'm going to pour the Hero Arts white embossing powder on top, being sure that the entire sentiment is completely covered and then just flicking off the excess there. And next I'm going to heat emboss this. I'm going to make sure my heat tool is nice and hot before bringing it to my paper. And then you can see all that excess powder. So once this cools off, I'm gonna take a dusting cloth and just rub away all that excess powder. And that is going to leave us with a nice white heat emboss sentiment on black cardstock, which I can then punch out with a circle punch and use on my card. From the same stamp set, I'm going to use a sub sentiment that says thinking of you. I'm also going to stamp this and white heat emboss it. So I'm gonna use some more EK Success powder tool and put that smaller sentiment on a stamp block and stamp it with some clear Simon Says Stamp embossing ink. Again, pour some white embossing powder from Hero Arts on top, catch the rest in a coffee filter and flick off the excess and you can just 
see me getting rid of some of the excess on the bottom as well. Then I'm going to heat set that so that the powder is nice and melted and once it's cool I'll come back in with a dusting cloth and make sure I get off all that excess powder. And once that's done, I'm going to trim it down with my Tim Holtz guillotine trimmer so that I can get it nice and close to the bottom of the sentiment. And I had just recently gotten this trimmer when I filmed this, so I was really just still getting used to exactly where it cut. So give yourself some time if you get a new trimmer to figure out exactly where the blade is going to come down on your paper. It's, sometimes it just takes a little practice. So I'm just going to shorten up the sides. I really just want this to be a nice thin cardstock sentiment that's going to go underneath that high that we punched out of the circle. So I want it cut as close as possible to the sentiment without cutting anything off. And I think I achieved what I wanted there. Now I'm going to take a four and a quarter by five and a half top folding note card. I'm going to put some Memory Runner XL from Thermoweb on that and place a piece of fun foam that is slightly smaller than my card panel on that. Put some adhesive behind the stamped card panel that we created with the Distress inks. And then I'm ready to start putting on my sentiments. I'm going to use some foam tape to pop up that high. And then I'm going to cut a piece of foam tape in half so that it's thin enough to fit behind my sentiment strip and make it just a little bit shorter as well so that it doesn't stick out the sides. I'm going to lay that down on the back of my sentiment strip and peel off the protective layer and lay that underneath my popped up high and that pretty much completes my card. It was very easy to do but I really like how you could color coordinate your background however you see fit using Distress Oxide inks. I love how beautifully they stamp. We all know they blend well and do really great techniques with them really well, but they can also stamp beautifully. So I've linked all the products I've used down below if you're interested in checking those out. I'm going to link to all of my Distress Oxide videos up here in the right hand corner right now. And I just wanted to thank you so much for stopping by today. Have a wonderful day.